All right, welcome guys to the uh, Blacks in the Union podcast. I'm here as your host. My name is Davion Robinson, the president of BSU, and uh, we're gonna go around the table and give a few introductions. I'm gonna introduce the person next to me. Um, this is your new Black Student Union president for the year of 2024, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, her name is Samaya Gray. Hello. Say, I'm Samaya Gray. I'm a junior, next year a senior, and I am the first female Madam President. All right. uh, my name is Valerie Harmon. I'm a senior and I'm current vice president. My name is Mira Hunter and I'm a junior. My name is Miss Kay and I'm the coordinator for extended learning. My name is Seth Donald uh, and I'm a freshman. Uh, I'm a member. I am Dr. James Kenshin and I'm pleased to be your guest. I am on the faculty at UW Parkside. And so, um, Dr. James Ketchin, right? James yes, yes, sir. Tell us about yourself today and uh, what brought you here today. Well, let, uh, so as I said, I'm uh, on the faculty. I'm, I'm a professor of music and director of choral activities at UW Parkside. Mm. And what brings me here today is that last year uh, I came to a celebration that BSU hosted. I was really impressed with everything, impressed with the fact that you all had an organization, mm -hmm. impressed with the fact that you all ran the celebration so well. And so I then got in touch with this day and said, I would like to be able to come to Case mm -hmm. and to connect with the VSU here. So that's, that's what brings me here. All right. I'm glad we can make that connection. Um, so are you like a music teacher? Is that what you kind of do, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, if, if you're on a college faculty, teaching is a big part of what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, you're also responsible for some kind of, we have different names, research or scholarship or creative activity. Uh, in my case, it's performing with choirs. Mm -hmm. I conduct choirs. Um, I do big concerts with choirs. For example, back at the beginning of the month, my choirs did this amazing piece by Wynton Marsalis, one of the great artists of our time called Abyssinian Mass. Mm -hmm. It was for choir and jazz band, and it was really something else. So those are some of the kinds of things that, that I do at UW Parkside in connection with my position there. Okay. That's what's up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so if anybody interested in music, we got Dr. <laughs> Dr. James Ketchin here. <laughs> okay so so i've been playing cello since second grade and piano since sixth grade i did per, um percussion for a while then i did drum line for a while Valley, um you? i used to play piano and i quit when i was 12 and then i started flute when i was i think 10 or 11 and i still play it yeah so i hope you won't take offense if I say <laughs> that on on the campus, UW Parkside campus, we heard you play just this past Saturday, oh, yeah. and you did an amazing job playing the flute. It was really wonderful to hear you play. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and and we don't, we would like to have you to come and play cello on our campus. I can do that. You can do that? Mm -hmm. Okay, consider yourself recruited. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We actually both have concerts tonight. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, um, don't be surprised if you see me at your concert tonight uh, <laughs> because I've got somebody who's, who's playing tonight. Oh, really? Yes. We also have an all star singer at the table. Oh, Miss K. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> so what what do you sing? I'm just Um so I sing in our praise team at church and then I'm also our youth choir director. So Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, so and then singing has always been a passion. I always sing a little psalm song. <laughs> uh, so I play trombone. Period. All right. Yeah. You got a concert tonight? Yep, got a concert Excited. Tonight. Pretty excited. Is y'all a concert or part of a case? No, I got a uh, concert oh. at Horlick. Oh, yeah. Our, our concert. Uh, same yeah. day, same time. 
what time is it? Oh, Seven. Okay. I don't know who told him to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and Seth, you got a concert tonight too? Yeah. Right here? Right here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. What time is your concert? Seven. Yeah, seven. Yeah. Oh. So what band are you in, if I may ask? <clears throat> what band are you in, if I may ask? Uh, I'm in the jazz band. All right. Oh, period. My boy get right. You first. I felt that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> So did you like grow up around music? Like, how was that for you? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I, I did. Um, and, you know, part of it was like hearing, like if you talk about you at church, mm-hmm. hearing the church choir sing when I was a little boy. And, and it fascinated me. And the way I know that looking back, I would ask my daddy to bring like tablets and I would try to draw pictures of the choir singing and people <laughs> playing instruments and stuff. So I, I knew that's, I know now that's how I was aware that I really had this thing for it. Then we moved when I was like right before first grade to a house that had an old piano in it. And I mean, this was old. I call it an Anna now because about a third of the keys didn't work. You know, it was a half <laughs> step flat and everything. <laughs> But I started banging on that and just banging and banging. And then after a while, I wanted to make sense of it. And that's when I started. My mother knew a little bit. She showed me like the C scale. So I started mm-hmm. with that. Mm-hmm. And then people would give me old music books and I would start with that, you know. And um, th- and this is a, this is a little, little, little detail, but as I got older in our church tradition, when Christmas came and Easter came, you said a speech. Mm-hmm. And I thought I was getting a little big to say speeches. <laughs> so, so I asked my mom if I could play a piece. She said, yeah, just so you're on the program. So I was going to play a piece. It had B flat in it. I didn't know what B flat was. <laughs> and my mama said, the lady around the corner, Miss Lorraine, she knows. So see if she'll come around and show you. And so I called she said, baby, I'm cooking dinner now, you know. <laughs> said, but I'll be around there. But she came and she showed me B flat. You know, a little thing like that, you know, helped me. Mm-hmm. Make. And then in, when I got to junior high school, I started singing in choir. And then senior high school, I started singing in choir. And by in 10th grade, I think, I knew what it was that I should be doing. I should be doing music. Yeah. I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, what... What can you say to the students at this table and other ones trying to pursue music um, post high school? Well, that's a great question. And and number one, I would encourage everybody, and and I'm going to sort of put that into two categories, people who are wanting to pursue it as, uh, as a major and as a profession, and people who are wanting to pursue it for the enjoyment. There's room for both types of people. For example, at our place, at our school, UW Parkside, we've got a choir and a band and an orchestra that's open to anybody from the community who wants to play. Some of those people are just out of school. Some of those people are grandparents, great-grandparents, and all between, but they want to play. They want to make music. Now, for people who are wanting to go into music, we have what's called a music major, and that allows you to do different things. You can be a performance concentrate. So, which means that you're going into it for the, for the sake of learning how to perform at a high level in public. Or you can do music education. And music education means that you're going to be a music teacher of some kind, maybe band, maybe orchestra, maybe choir, maybe general music, elementary. Uh, and I should tell you this about our music education program. We do a fantastic job. In the last, I guess, about 10 years, everybody that we have graduated with a music degree, music education degree is teaching. Mm. I have a feeling that the gentleman that Seth is going to be playing under tonight at seven is a graduate of UW Parkside. Yeah, Mr. Filey. Mr. Love, Filey. Love Mr. Yeah, Filey. yeah. And, and then so is the band director at Horlick. So is Mr. the band director, Filey. right, at, at, at Park as well. So we do a really good job with that. We've got commercial music. And commercial music is is really developing in the different branches. People are getting into digital music. We have somebody to transfer in who's interested in digital music. Uh, And that could range from doing like instrumental tracks, but doing them digitally. Or it could include things like doing uh, 
you know, music for video games. A lot of music goes into video games, right? And so different things uh, like that. So yeah, there, there's lots of opportunity for people to do that. Now, if you looked at the total number of jobs out there, you won't have, you know, zillions of jobs mm -hmm. for music people, but there are jobs and somebody gets those jobs. And if you're really interested, if you really commit it, that somebody could be you. Thank you. You're welcome. Was there ever a time where like you lost motivation for music or like you just didn't know if you really wanted to do it? <laughs> wow, you asked some great questions. Uh, <laughs> and I appreciate the question. Every, for, from the time I was in 10th grade, I, re I was really in love with music, deeply in love with music. And, and before I decided that music was what had me, I was like going to be a politician and a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And I tell people today I would have been good at one of those. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, not so much. I let them guess. But, you know, music became the thing that really came after me. And I knew that it was for me because uh, it was just something that totally began to totally en en engulf me and, and everything that I did, you know, I began to th think, okay, music is music. And, and that, there have been, I had a, a job once where I got kind of frustrated with some things, but it never really caused me to disavow music, you know? And uh, so that what I tell people today is that I get a chance to do this thing that I love doing. And when I get up in the morning to go to work, I don't have to force myself to get out the house and go do this thing. I love this. And I get there and I love working with the students. I love making music with the students. And I get paid to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't beat that. Exactly. <laughs> so I wanna ask, um, are, there any, are there any challenges as a music teacher um, or faculty? Um, what's like the biggest challenge you have? Well, oh gosh, gosh, y'all got y'all got some awesome questions. These are amazing <laughs> yeah. questions. So, biggest challenge, I think, probably. So, I'm going to name two challenges. One challenge is one that everybody who teaches anything has, mm -hmm. potentially at least, and that is if you're trying to teach somebody who does not want to learn what you're trying to teach them. Mm -hmm. That that's a tough nut. I mean, you know, that's hard. Exactly. You know, sometimes you can get win people over and you can find a way to kind of get to them, to their affect, to their emotion. But a lot of times, you know, that's a really, really tough, tough thing. The other thing, and and it's it's a challenge, and it's a real but it's it's a good challenge. It's sort of like the coach who coaches a team preparing the team for a game. Mm -hmm. And and you're trying to do everything you can to put your team in position to win that game. Mm -hmm. uh, but but you really don't know for sure, 100%, what's going to happen until you get out there on the court, on the field, or whatever it is. Exactly. So I will start thinking about a, a piece. I talked about the Abyssinian Mass. Wonderful thing, but it's pretty tough. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do this, right? Nobody knew a note. Okay, And so I've got to ca have this vision of what it can be. I've got to have this dream. And I've got to have people back when everybody's trying to figure out what's on page 15 and let's go with this part again and that sort of thing. I've got to still be able to keep that end game in mind mm -hmm. uh, and get people from where they are, which is knowing nothing, mm -hmm. to where they are going to be, which is being able to stand in front of an audience and sing this music. But I love that challenge. <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely a big challenge. I don't know if I could ever do nothing like that. <laughs> Trying to get people to s learn how to sing. <laughs> 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 I don't know, man. But um, so I know you're a doctor, or so how was that? How did you? How did you? How long did it take you to get your doctorate, at least? Okay, so uh, so college for me, un what we call undergrad, mm -hmm. you know, was four years. And so I ended up with a master's degree, I mean, a bachelor's degree coming out of, out of four years of college. Right. And when I graduated, in fact, by the time I graduated, I had made what I call my, my three-year plan. Mm -hmm. And this was just me. Um, I had several really wonderful mentors five, 10, 15 years ahead of me. Mm-hmm. And these were wonderful people. They gave me their time, their encouragement, and all of that. But they were people that had these dreams. 
And for most of them, they had stopped short of reaching their dream. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to teach high school for three years. And I started out teaching high school. They hired me when I was 20 years old. Ooh. Okay. So I, I started teaching high school, taught high school for three years. Right. And then I went to graduate school, got a master's. Mm -hmm. And then I taught at, at three different universities or colleges, universities. And then finally got the opportunity to, to do the doctorate, which I did full time. But I did that in two years, a little over two years. Was that the, was it? Was that the hardest degree to get? Not, not, a, not really. I mean, because it's like you realize that the, that it's going to demand more, mm -hmm. and so you give more. Mm -hmm. You are at a point where you are more able as a student than you've ever been. Mm -hmm. You know, you know how to study, you know how to learn, you know how to get what's important in the process. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and a good piece of it is following through and making sure you do every single thing that you need to do. I tell people that once I left college, once I left my four-year program, I never made anything less than an A. Okay. Out of all, and, and that and and that wasn't just smart. It was like knowing this is what I have to do, and I've got to do what I got to do. Got to take care of my business. Exactly. Yeah. That's how it's supposed to be. That's it. Take You're right. You're business, right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> man. Any other questions at the table? Yeah, I have a couple. Just a quick one. Uh, what church did you grow up at, if you don't mind? No, I don't mind at all. Um, I grew up at a church. And, and so I should tell you that I'm from Florida. I'm from Jacksonville, oh, okay. Florida. And so I grew up at a church named Day Spring Baptist Church. Uh, and it was the first place that I knew when I knew anything about going to church. It was like, you know, that, that was the place that I saw it. I, and so that and so that was where, you know, I went to Sunday school. That was where, you know, I confessed Christ. And that was where I started playing in church, really. Uh, that was a little kind of thing. I was about 12 years old. And there was this woman at a, at a daily vacation Bible school you know, which is a summer activity for kids at church, uh, who was playing the organ. And I happened to hear, I, and I kind of sneaked up, you know, and said, so I thought, well, Miss Smith, Willie Lee Smith, you know, to call her name. Uh, can I play? And she looked at me and she went, you know how? <laughs> which is a logical question. I said, yes, ma'am. Uh, I said, so, well, come on. And so I sat out there, I playing. And she disappeared. I didn't think anything of it. And then at about three or four minutes, she was back in the back of the church and, and it brought the pastor in to hear me play. And so that's how I started playing in, in church, you know, little bit by little bit. Uh, but the church was awfully important to me. I got encouragement from people, lots and lots of people, other than my parents who told me that, you know, you're going to be a fine young man. You know, you keep on keeping on. That was what they would say, you know, encourage you in that way. Perseverance. Keep on keeping on, you know, and and uh, telling me when I did a good job and all of that. And and that mattered a great deal to me. Uh, do you have any, like, advice for kids who want to pursue music in um, college? Yeah, uh, I certainly do. Number one is before you get there, continue playing and practicing and being the best that you can be with with what you're doing. Um, one one of the things, and I think maybe a lot of times people, not just in music, but a lot of fields think that they can kind of, you know, blow high school off and whatever. And then when they get to college, they go turn it around. Uh, a lot of your success in college is built on your success before you get there. It's like a lot of things are like. Uh, so keep practicing. You know, be serious about music. You take every opportunity you can to learn as much as you can learn. And then once you get to college, you know, try to be focused in in making in making music and all. And and it's laid out for you to do. You have lessons, for example. Every student has a private lesson every week with an instructor. You know, take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, and, and, you know, and try to learn things, associate with other students. I had a student, I have a student now. She's finished her freshman year, and she's just excited. She came in as a music major, and right around 
December, she was about ready to quit. She was like, uh, I don't know what I want to do. But she started connecting with other students, and they began to encourage her. And I could see her kind of pick up. She got picked up, you know. And after a while, you know, she's like, yeah, I want to do this. I can do this. So, so those are some things that I would say right off uh, for, for you. And just, you know, just be, here's the other thing. Be honest with yourself about what, what you want to do. Sometimes you know before you get into a thing that it is or isn't for you. Other times you get into it and then you find out, I really like this or oh, this is not what I thought it was. At the point that you find out that it's not what you should be doing, whatever it is, even if it's music, you know, continue to do it for your own enjoyment, but don't be afraid to get out of the program and do something else, okay? Because it's your life and you're the one more than anybody else, anybody on the whole planet, you're the one in control of your life. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so we talked about like things that you find the most challenging. So what are some things about your job that you enjoy the most or look forward to? Ah, gosh. I enjoy teaching students, uh, enjoy all of the people who come. And, and there's something about people um, – and I think this is probably true for a lot of people in different fields. When you have an opportunity to help people along the way, to help people particularly, you know, make advancement in their lives, that's something that you really want to do. And so as I see people come in as freshmen and, and I see them, uh, you know, start out, you know, how can I help them? And sometimes I will sit down with the student and I know they don't, most of them don't have an answer for this question right away, but I want to ask it for them so that they will be be thinking about it. How can I help you? Mm. You know, and so that's one part of it. And then that I get to do this thing with music. So it's this combination, people and music. That's that's what really that's what I really enjoy. How do you feel about rap music new school meant rap music um <laughs> like hip-hop today yeah uh so i generally speaking i i like it uh i don't listen to it a whole lot you know but i like it and i uh, you know appreciate it there are some uh you know, you and they, you know you could talk to me about all the different types and varieties there's some where you know i kind of go like you know <laughs> like that uh but I understand, too, that it's a style, mm -hmm. and I respect the style greatly. I respect the ability and the talents of the people, you know, uh, to, to be able to rap, be able to rhyme, and, 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 and just do it with such skill, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, so, I, so I, like, I like the style and everything, even though it's not something that I listen to a whole lot myself. Right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it can get a little... Yeah. Aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have another question. Yeah. Do you think you're more of like a play by ear person or like do you have to read the music? Mm. Well, I, just, I I'm almost tempted to ask that somebody give you these questions. I mean, they are just awesome <laughs> questions. They are just perfect questions, really. So I I told you about growing up in the house that had mm -hmm. the Anna in it, you know, the third of the keys didn't work. And then once I started to doing you know, something other than banging. So here's me sitting piano and I'm doing what I'm doing. And my mother's in the kitchen. Okay, now she's not really a musician, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I would be playing something out of a hymnal or playing something off of a, you know, sheet, piece of sheet music. And then, and then after a while, I would kind of deviate and start doing something else. And she would say to me, and it wasn't, it wasn't criticism, she would say, she said, you're not playing out that hymnal anymore, are you? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was like, how does she know that? Well, I mean, you know, I know, I understand now. But she was never critical of that. But she wanted me to know that she knew the difference. And so she encouraged me in that way to do both. And so, you know, if I'm in, so I'm, I'm playing in my church. I'm on the music staff at my church now. And, you know, I can open the hymn book and play hymn number 242. Or, you know, the uh, the pastor, your know, bishop can start singing a song 
and nobody knows what key he's in. <laughs> and I can hear what key he's in and start playing. So I do both of those. I feel like people who can just like listen and then play. I just, I don't know. That, that is, that is so <laughs> that cool. I can't do that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Well, it's, it's, it's how you learn to use the language, meaning the language of music. You know, it's, it's how you, you, you get to a point where you can hear the sounds and you can translate those sounds into making them yourself at, rather than having to see the symbols before you make the sound. And you can do both. You can. promise you. So I, I'm curious. Can I ask a question? I want to ask Mr. <laughs> Seth a question here. So, so tell me again, how long you've been playing trombone? I've been playing trombone since fifth grade. Great, great. You like trombone? Yeah, I like trombone. Yeah. So how old were you before you could get to seventh <laughs> position? <laughs> I don't know if I can get to it. <laughs> Se- seventh position is the farthest mm-hmm. thing. Now, I've got a son. He's 24 now. But he um, graduated from a certain school, certain high school called J.I. Case. Y'all heard of J.I. Case? Uh-huh. No, no, seriously. He, he's a Case graduate. And he was a trombonist, but he was also a pianist. And, uh, and so he went on to college and he, and he majored. He had a double major, really, uh, piano performance and, and aviation. You know? And his daddy liked the fact that he did both of those in, in the in four years, yeah. parents like that kind of, thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So yeah, yeah. So so yeah, uh, trombone is, is 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 good. I like trombone. What what attracted you to trombone? Mm. Nothing really. I guess I just like picked it. Mm. Seth, can you ask him who is a famous trombone player or who are some famous? Uh, I. <laughs> Yeah. Oh God! I I have to get back to you on that. <laughs> I'm, I'm seriously because I can't I can't uh, think of anybody by name right now. But there are some awesome trombone players, yeah. um, and uh, in in all fields. Uh, I'm thinking particularly in the field of jazz. You got some really awesome guys. Yeah. But I have to get you some some names. I promise you, I will. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. I Last year, um, we had this. I don't. I don't. He was a retired Mr. teacher, Mr. Al. Mm-hmm. He came in. He he was trying to teach us how to play guitar. And I was not getting it. <laughs> yeah. So what'd you find hard about it? Um, moving your hands fast. I can't uh-huh. do that. Okay. Yeah. 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 To change like yeah. the you notes. Play cello. Yeah, but that's but different. Yeah. That's different. You're in one one position a lot. I mean, you yeah. change, but you but it's not like yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I can feel that. <laughs> yeah. Do you play the guitar? No, I don't play the guitar. Mm-hmm. I don't play the guitar. I I play piano. I play organ, and then not at you know a concert level. But mm-hmm. I play piano and organ. I can use that as a basis for teaching, as a medium for teaching when mm-hmm. I teach. Um, I do it well enough that they let me do it in church right. <laughs> uh, and all of that. Um, and, uh, you know, I can do some rudimentary things on instruments. I could maybe do a scale if you if you, uh, if you you let me do whole notes. Mm-hmm. I could do a scale on the cello or the violin <laughs> or something like that. Uh, the flute was always a challenge yeah. but because I couldn't get hit the rotation right yeah. away, you know, and it would be like... <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> so that so those, those are the instruments I do, and, and and in college I was a voice major. Okay. Yeah. So what is your favorite instrument then? For me to do or just yeah, favorite? just for you to play. I guess piano, I suppose. Choir, playing the choir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, she in the corner. Um, I actually just started my first bass lesson on Sunday. So Did when you? I come in here playing the bass, again, the hand thing was you were saying that was yeah. my biggest part in learning to keep my thumb in the back as a stabilizer mm-hmm. and stuff. I was having my thumb up here. So okay. that's, well, I'm, I'm going to get it though. I just yeah. started. So <laughs> you going to teach me. Well, I I, 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 I I don't know bass, but uh, I know. So I, so I have, and I don't want to be like, like talking a whole lot about my kids, but but my youngest plays bass, and I'm real proud of it. 
job. But she she does play bass, but I I can't really. What's her play. number? Cause <laughs> 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 I just thought yeah, I y'all get you, yeah. uh, and uh, and she shows up uh, every day at a certain high school called JIK's. She, oh, she's daughter. Yeah. tell her I'm in the library office downstairs. Okay. <laughs> I gotta bring my amp, but you know I'll be down there. Well, well, most days when she leaves, she you know, she's got an instrument. So, she, so you got the amp and she's got the bass. Okay, like, mm-hmm. the we gotta connect. Or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, but I mean that's a good. I have a former student uh, who I'm excited about this. He's going to be on our faculty. Just recently hired, just like. Awesome. Last couple of weeks, and he said to me, because he, he he when he when he finished in, uh, school, got his degree, went to New York. He's been teaching in New York City, but he said to me, the bass helped me pay my bills for a long time. I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something in the bass, yeah. something lucrative in the bass. Yeah. Good investment. Yes, yes indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, it was nice having you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any other any questions? questions? Any Did you have any more questions? For us? Well, um, I, uh, so I, I will, I will ask, um, yeah, I'll, I'll ask, I'll ask a question. Um, there is a song and, and it's a special song to me and it's a special song, not just to me, but to millions and millions and millions of people. And and I brag, I have a brag about my song. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it came from a school that was founded in 1868 in my hometown. In 1900, the principal of the school was expecting Booker T. Washington to come and speak. And so they wanted a special song. And so he had a brother who was really serious in the music. Um, and he was more, you know, a literary person. He said, I'll write the words if you write the music. And so they did that. And they premiered that song. The students from the high school that I ended up going to and graduating from years later now, uh, they premiered that song. And that song caught on and became just a really, really well-known, highly respected song. And so what I wanted to know is if anybody else knows that song, all the way through, all of the verses of it, it and can say them. I can look it up. Mm. What's the song? Mm. All right. I so, so I since I asked that, I'll, I'll say it. Can I? Can I say the song? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers sighed. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading a path through the blood of the slaughtered. Out of our gloomy past till now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, Thou who hast by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path, we pray, lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee, lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand, true to our God, true to our native land. And here's my challenge. The first five people, and you can you can hook me up on TikTok or whatever. <laughs> the first five people who can say to me all of those verses of that song. The first five people, 
I've got something I was sending. What? <laughs> 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 got to make it worthwhile. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, I mean, it's worthwhile. So I, I'll give you this. I'll give you this hand if you like to eat. <laughs> so raise your hand if you don't like to eat. Okay, that's what I thought. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Time to get up. Uh, so that was the question. Did, it, did anybody know? I heard. I heard some people talk. Yeah. We did our best. Mr. Prince was messing it up back yeah, there. Yeah, Mr. Prince don't know what he's doing. He butchered it. He butchered it. But I just want to ask because so I do a lot of events in the community um, as an activist and an organizer, and they sing this song. I was just at a mental health summit on Saturday in Milwaukee, and. I beg them not to sing all the verses. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they do it anyway because yeah. nobody knows the second and the third verse. Yeah. Right. And for me personally, I want to ask you because you have a personal connection to the song. Mm. Why is the last words true to our native land? Which land? Okay. Lost. So, and that's that's a great question, and I will answer this way. And and a lot of people may have a whole different answer, a whole different take on the answer. Uh, but, you know, my answer is my answer. That when it comes to patriotism in the United States, people who look like us, people who were our ancestors, invested a heck of a lot in this country. Mm -hmm. they, if, if you know the story of America, mm -hmm. and, and I mean the real American history, and you can't have real American history unless you have my story in it. From the beginning, from the time when there was nothing but trees and wilderness, mm -hmm. people who looked like us were brought over to help make that become farmland and to do all of those things that made America. America. Their, their stories of presidents, you know, one, uh, John Adams, second president of the United States was having a, a conference with somebody from, from France, I think it was. And there were slaves, enslaved people plastering the inside of the wall. Mm. They, all of those buildings that were built at that time. Okay? All of the wars and the Revolutionary mm -hmm. War, Civil War, all those wars. So and so what I think James Rowland Johnson was trying to, to get at, and what I, I agree with fully, is that Patriotism is not something that belongs to somebody else. And, and he's not gonna let somebody else take that from mm -hmm. us. It's ours. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is our land because we put our sweat mm -hmm. into helping to make this land happen. We shed our blood. And you look at patriots, and patriots are not just people who go fight wars. Mm -hmm. you, you look at the, at the people who died, the, the Medgar Everses and uh, the Martin Luther Kings and Malcolm X, all of those people. Yeah, even even Malcolm X was a patriot. He was critical, as in, and by the way, uh, to pay him homage, El Haj Malik El Shabazz, his name. Was you know he was a critic, but he was you know he was ultimately trying to get us to the place where we could be fully invested. Mm -hmm. So so that's what when he says native land, that's what what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. This country that, that that we with our blood and our sweat and our tears. Well said, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you for that. That was a great question. Thank you so much. We appreciate you for coming on to our podcast. Um, thank you guys for all having great questions asked today. Um, for anybody that's interested in music, uh, make sure you guys reach out to UW, uh, UW Parkside. Yes, yes, um, Dr. Ketchum, uh, get, get at him. Y'all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, so thanks, we're thanks. gonna be wrapping this up. Follow us on Instagram, BSU, uh, Racing Case BSU, TikTok, Racing Case BSU, and also we do have the first annual Racing Juneteenth Day Parade, June seventeenth at nine a.m. All right. So make sure you guys are there. You know. All right. He's like, great. He's like, great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to sing the Black National Anthem, our very own choir director.